Hey, welcome to another edition, another episode Amazing. of Do It For The Culture Podcast. Amazing. And who are we here with? You here with Kobe, Jacoby, the one and with, only, the we, one and only. The one and only. The one and only. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Tell these people where they can find you at. What is your social media? You can find me at the T-H-E-E underscore J-A-C-O-B-Y underscore. The Jacoby, period. Now, just recently, you know what I'm saying, you are now a bonafide family man. Mm -hmm. You just I had am. two beautiful children, two I twins. Am. Yes, I do. And now, these are your first kids, first. right? First yeah. time. It's my first. So tell us, walk us through how how is that? Like, uh -oh. what's the feeling? What's the first, like, what was, what was the first initial feeling I can't when you cuss, found out I? twins? You can say whatever you want to say on cool. Do It For The Culture podcast. For The Culture. The first nine months was scary as shit. <laughs> Every month it was a new uh, anxiety. Yeah. Seriously, it was a new anxiety. The first uh, ultrasound, I'm like, oh. The second ultrasound, oh, it's twins. The third ultrasound, yo, why head by our feet like that? <laughs> then you start, you start having all these different anxieties. But it, it's been an extremely uh, journey that. I, I can't, I'm definitely, I, words can't even explain. So it's a lot of mixed emotions going on, right? Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And having twins, man, imagine when you first find out you having twins. Yeah. That's, that, that, that right there was just a shock. I was in shock for the entire week. I didn't do nothing. Like, I literally <laughs> didn't do nothing. So That's one of those stare at the wall moments. You're like, man, it this was, is really it was happening. Like yeah. It was like that. I just sat there for a whole week. I didn't do nothing. I was just like. What am I? What what's about to happen? What I'm gonna do? But uh, ultimately, the greatest thing that ever happened to me, and it's still right. going. It's still going. They only three weeks old, so. And it's definitely a gift, right? And it's definitely uh, you know, God's plan, you know. Definitely, definitely, man. I've had situations before. I was, you know, supposed to be, and it didn't happen the way it was supposed to happen, and it happened that way. So, you That's know, true. That's true. God's plan. Shout out to Drake. Hey, shout out to Drake, right? But let's get into this. Um, so now let's talk music, right? Yeah. So what are some of the projects that you already have out for people that don't know about your music history? Well, what are some of the projects that they can get now? Well, I have the EP project that I've worked on with my business partner, my friend, um, Sanford, Sounds Illustrated. Um, you can go on Apple, Tidal. Uh, Deezer, Google, Spotify. It's called The Wake Up, you know, and it's to me it was an uh, answer for everything that was dealing with justice in the society, you know what I'm saying? It originally started from uh, the Freddie Gray situation in Baltimore a few years ago. Okay. And I named it Black Lives Matter, but then I switched it to All Lives Matter. Yeah. Because it was almost like, you know, I want to play on the word of Black Lives Matter if all lives matter, That's right? True. Black yep. Lives Matter if all lives matter. You know, you hear people say all lives matter, and then it's almost like a debate. Like, well, black? No, Black Lives is all lives, so it does. So that's true. But that's yeah, true. no, the EP that that EP, and I'm working on a lot of good things right now. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of like executive producing, some writing behind the scenes type work. I'm yeah. Working on trying to do. Um, uh, we we want to do like a YouTube TV series, you know. Okay. What I'm so we've been working on a whole bunch of stuff, but it's some stuff in the works, though. It's definitely some stuff in the works. You know? So any of so any of these projects drop in like later 2019 or early 2020? 2020. I want to I want to I want to basically take this time right here to just strategize and put everything together. But 2020 is looking like a good good time now. Okay, so. It looks like you got a lot of projects going on. You got a lot of things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to get your opinion on a couple of things that's going on let's right go now home. in the industry, let's right? Let's, we got to be real. Let's gonna be, we're going to be real. Yeah, let's get into some things. For the culture. Definitely for the culture, for right? For the culture. <laughs> so let's talk about Jay-Z and NFL, right? Mm -hmm. So he has this partnership where he was supposed to... Basically, he's curating all of the halftime shows. Right. And people kind of like took it out of like as soon as the news broke, they're like, "Oh, what is he doing?" And they start bringing up Kaepernick, and right. they're like, "Oh, he's supposed to be kneeling." 
And then boom, Jay Z drops the video. Well, the video dropped of Jay Z talking about we're done with Nelly. So like, do you feel like we're? Do you feel like that the, the Jay Z and NFL deal could bring Kaepernick in the in the in the um talk? Or do you think it's one of those things that they're just, you know, a, it's a Rock Nation thing, not a Jay Z thing? All right. First and foremost, I don't want to sound like I'm all everything Jay Z. Right. I love Jay Z. Jay Z's my favorite. Shout rapper. out the whole. My favorite person, period. Yeah. When I first heard about the news, at first, initially, I was like, I don't know, you know, where it's going on. And of course, I fed into what everybody else was saying and what they was talking about. And then I had took a step back before everybody else started to say anything. And I listened to what he said. Mm -hmm. I was listening. And he really was just basically letting you know, like, all right, cool. We we did that. Now what? Now what are we going to do? What are we going to do after this? Right? It's no different. And I tell everybody this right now. This is my, anybody that know me, they'll tell you that I, this is exactly what I say. Why are we protesting anyway? Right? Why are we getting out there marching and saying Black Lives Matter? That's not doing anything. The people that's in power, they're sitting at the top. They're at the top of their, their penthouse, and they're looking down at ants, right? Because they're already at the top, and they're looking at everybody walk past. What are you doing? You're screaming, and you're stopping traffic. What is that doing? Right. You want to protest, you hit them in the, where it hurts, their yeah. pockets. Martin right. Luther King said that back in the day, I think that they were boycotting Coca-Cola or a bread company. Yeah. So to, to, to go back to what you, you know, the initial question... I didn't see nothing wrong. I understood what he was saying. Like, we're going to be past the kneeling. We're past the kneeling. That's not to say forget what he did. He did. He brought attention to the, what, the social justice system, right? Exactly. So now that's where we're at. It's a, it, it, it's, how can I say this? It's a marathon, right? It's a baton race, right? Once you've reached your, 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 your lap, and you have the baton in your hand and you can't go no further because that's exactly what it is right now, mm -hmm. you have to pass the baton to the next person that's in front of you. Let the race continue. You know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King them did it in the civil rights era. You know, you have Jesse Jesse um, Jackson who did it for the, in the 80s and all that, in yeah. the 90s. You know what I mean? So that's all it really is. So I think people need to just relax. Let what's going to happen happen, even though it does seem like it's a Rock Nation deal. Yeah, I think I think people definitely need to just see what's going on. Let him work his magic, let him do his thing, and then let's let's have our opinions after we have like you know Cause, cause saw the can, final product. Yeah, because we in cancel you know? era. The final we, we talked about this before. Right? Yeah. So every everybody gets canceled quick. every week. Everybody's quick to cut somebody off. Yeah. How many of those people when Kaepernick basically was kneeling and protesting. Was they still watching football? You see what I'm saying? We can go to people's social media page right now and look like, yo, they, they were still they was at a football party then. They watched the Super Bowl and obviously they watched the Super Bowl to fi find out Travis Scott and Big Boy performed. Right. So you didn't really too much care about it. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's like uh, people really right now, I think the worst thing that we are living in is everybody has an opinion. And everybody think that their opinion matters. And I feel like everybody is just angry. Everybody's they want to find something to be mad about. And we live in an era where everybody wants to be famous. Yep. Everybody yep. wants to be famous. Attention whores. Yeah, exactly. And that's the number one problem. All right. So now we have this situation with um, Lord Jamar, right? Mm -hmm. Lord Jamar is coming at Eminem, and he's been coming at Eminem hard lately, mm -hmm. like. <clears throat> if you remember, even Eminem threw a couple bars at him as well. Mm -hmm. But um, he's saying that, well, the big talk is is that Eminem is a guest in the house of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's stemming off. And then you also, you know, you had Gucci Man. He was asked, was Eminem the king of hip-hop? And he was like, well, think about it. I don't go get in my car and bump Eminem. Mm -hmm. And then Nick Cannon spoke on it too, saying that, you know, no niggas in the hood don't play Eminem. Mm -hmm. So, what's your take on, do you think Eminem is a guest in the house of hip-hop, or do you think Eminem is one of those people that's in the top ten? I don't think he a guest. I think he belongs where he belongs. Period. I think that you have Lord Jamar, I spoke with him before on the phone. Yeah. Lord Jamar is pro-black. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he, he that's how he feels. I don't think that, like I say, Eminem's not. He's definitely not a guest. You know what I'm saying? And if we start putting or placing color on hip hop, then hip hop is dead, like Nas nah, said, because hip hop is not has nothing to do with color. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is a religion, if to most. If that was the way, case, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's it's for the culture. It's the culture. Look at Post Malone. Every time he drop an album, it's he hits. goes number one on hip hop charts. Hits. You go. Let's go back to you know the Beastie Boys, who yep. were there in the beginning. Yep. You know what I'm saying. So when you start saying that, it's almost like you're trying to box it in. And hip hop was never about being boxed in. Yep. So nah, I don't. I don't think he's. He, nah, he's he he belongs where he's supposed to be. And that's what I said too. Um, definitely, I remember uh, Willie D saying like from the Ghetto Boys. He was like, well. If he's a guest in the hip hop, he sure got a key to the house. Yeah, <laughs> he got a room. You know what I'm saying? Now, I think that people start to go back and then, you know, with him being white, because that's what it really is about him being white, and you don't want uh, another person being the king. That's just how Elvis took rock and roll from Chuck Berry. Nah, he belongs where he belongs, man. Right. Even with the Elvis situation, Elvis knew who was the real king of, uh, you know, said rock and yeah. roll. He knew Chuck Berry, but yeah. You have a difference. You have pop and you have, you know, the ones who really do it. So, There's certain people that you can't even compare to each other. At all. Yeah. So, and even with that, everybody, my homie says this, and this is a real saying, opinions is like assholes. Everybody got one. And right now, that's what's ruling the world is opinions. So, it's not never, everybody says facts, hashtag facts. And everybody, Nobody's, and everybody shits thing. Exactly. As Ice Cube say. Exactly. It's true. So, nah, he's not a guy. He's, he, he belongs. But um, changing gears a little bit, um, we also was hearing about during the pre, mm -hmm. talking about, because you know there's like this new emergence, mm -hmm. emergence, is that the word, emergence, mm -hmm. of female rappers mm -hmm. now. There are female rappers everywhere, from the Cash Dolls, mm -hmm. the Dream Dolls, you got Tierra Wag, mm -hmm. you know, um, Lakia47, Lake, I mm -hmm. think that's her name. Uh, Tokyo Jet, so it's like a whole bunch of female rappers now. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan Rap Thee Stallion, you gotta say Rap City. Rap City, you know um, Megan Thee Stallion right. is here. Uh, you got Cardi B. So, right. how do you feel about Jermaine Dupri saying that all the rappers? Do you think that all female rappers talk about the same thing, or do you feel like he was just talking about those three, which was Nicki, Megan, and Cardi? I feel like Jermaine's the reason why. These women are rapping that way, and his—that's what I was telling people. His opinion is very valid. He had the first female rapper to go platinum. That, but he also rapped about the strip clubs and, and, and you know what I'm saying. That's true. With the, that, but that was a little bit after. Still and all, you know what I mean. At the end of the day, well, it still the, runs. The time, it, yeah, yeah, it still yeah. runs the course. Yeah, to yeah, that's true. Him basically bringing a female rapper. Him rapping about stripping. And he the, was behind them franchise boys. Boom. And then let's go far, <laughs> farther. In his studio, he has a stripping pole. So with him saying that all female... Honestly, this is how I honestly feel about it. I understand where he was coming from. Right? Because it's a different... Yeah. It's a different time. But you got to also know this. Every couple of years, every you have, everybody has an opportunity for it to be the it thing. Yep. Right? Let's go back... 90s, 98, No Limit had it, and it was No Limit's turn. Then you had Rockefeller had it. You had Rough Riders. They had it. It was their turn. Then you had Cash Money. It was their turn. Then you had the Houston era. It was their turn. Everybody, every every trend, and this is what that's exactly what it is. It's just a trend. All trends go in and they go out. Except for the fact that the South has had the longest run. The South has the culture because this is, honestly, it's Southern culture. The music that's being played is, trap music is, of course, derivative from the South. Gucci. Strip club music. Yeah. All strip clubs, they're basically South. Yeah, yeah. Right? California is not known for it, right? Nope. Uh, New York's not known for it. Chicago's not known for it, right? Nope. All South. Yeah. So that's the music that they're being played, and plus that's the marketing too. That that that's how they break records. The first, you know, what I'm saying the strippers that's up in there, they listen to the music. If the stripper dance to it, and it's it's a hit. Yeah. So I understood what he was saying though, but nah, 
it's just it's the women's turn. Let the women be. Let it. Let's they turn. Let it be. And then I also agree with Cardi B. She was like, when I tried to make other type of records, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear me rapping about my pussy. I do. I want to hear him rap about the pussy. You know what I'm saying? I, I said hear him rap that. About what I don't. Everything they want to rap about. I don't want to hear about no female rapper talking about she toting pistols and I shit. I don't. Because at I the end of the day, that. if a female's tougher than me, it's like, well, shit, it's nothing that we can really talk about. That's what I I'm said. not saying I want to hear women just talk about pussy. Yeah. I'm saying but. I want to hear a woman's perspective. Yeah. You right. know, I tell, my, I tell my girl right now to this day. Hey, a man piss standing up, a woman piss sitting down. Right. I don't know how that feels. Right. Even though I could piss sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. But I would rather, I want you, you do that. That's what you do. Yeah. So I want to hear from a woman's perspective. Yeah. I want to hear the Griselda Blancos. I want to hear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Now, a lot of men won't agree with me when I say that. Like, you know, it's going to come a time where you're going to have a female that's the Jay-Z, the female Jay-Z. Or that's the true. female Biggie. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And I was you gotta listening. let me eat. And I and I said that we live in a different time. And just like Fifty said, Fifty Fifty feel like right now Chris Brown is better than Mike. And I feel like this. I kind of get what he's saying. With and he he even said there's some rappers today that rap better than Tupac. I get what he's saying with that. I get it. Like it. I, you don't believe that? No. Now I don't care what Michael Jackson did. You can't erase what he did. As far as but but he had a longer history. run though I get what Fifty saying yeah, it's a longer even with run that, Chris Brown they almost had the same run we got we can't well hold on let's see he, we have to wait till Chris Brown is fifty that's true right but I Chris think Brown been doing this since he was young too the thing is you got to remember something and I was talking to my girl today because we was looking at uh, not Thriller Moonwalker yeah. we was looking at the movie Moonwalker and I said something to her and this is true. Michael Jackson wouldn't have been as big if his skin color, if he, you know what I'm saying, he didn't go through the Villa Lago situation. If he was still black, dark skinned, he wouldn't have been as poppy. Yeah. So let's go forth to the Chris Brown. If Chris Brown didn't have so much of a thug image and he was more liked by the majority of the media or people, yeah. he probably could be. Yeah. But because he has this thug image or whatever, they're not going to let him in. Like, they're not going to give him that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I say it, that's subject to that's subject to change. That's that's just a you know. But other than that, I, I love fifty. I love fifty to death. That's one of the dudes I'd sit back and I listen to I just listen to him. Just yeah. listen. But I can't listen to that right there what he said. <laughs> that really, I understand what he was trying to say. I just think it's Chris Brown's dope too. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Yeah. But Right now, it's too early to be comparing, and I don't be liking that. I don't be liking when you, you people compare, you know. I think I heard it in some interview before. I forget what. It was an editor. It was on one of the uh, documentaries I seen. He said that the four tops and the temptations, you know what I'm saying, having this argument of who's the best. He was like, that shit sounds stupid. Yeah. They just did music. And I think we in this era where we, we, we think corporate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everything's about the dollar. Yeah, it's too it's too it's too soon to be talking about he's better right now. It's too soon. I feel you. So, so also, um, so you're from Chicago, right? Absolutely. Of course, that's where we at, absolutely. Chicago. Um, how do you feel about the Chicago music scene and who are you liking female rapper wise and male rapper wise? On the on the Chicago scene. On the Chicago scene. Whether you feel like the OG still got it and still holding it down or you feel like these newcomers is really Doing anything like honestly, that. I'm gonna be totally honest, man. I ain't really heard too much of nothing, and that's not no disrespect to nobody. I really haven't been. I really have not been listening to nothing. I've really been focused on trying to do everything I need to do. Now I've have I know of I know of I really believe, and people won't understand this. I believe that Chief Keith is the reason why Chicago music scene is the way it is, mm -hmm. and I mean that. And what I mean by that is, it's on the scene. He started a him. wave. Because of him. Yeah. Right? A lot of his people that don't like him, they they will even say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you have Dirk. Uh, Herbo. Dirk. You got yeah. a lot of other cats, man, that's underground that people really don't even know about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of Chicago. I, I know a lot of people personally. And then, um, I mean, you got Polo G. You got Dreezy. I like what he's doing. I like, I love Dreezy. The Chanel bag. Uh, yeah. 
You got Queen Key. Crazy. You got um, Queen Key. I I know. Her, you know what I'm saying. People around her. You know what I'm saying. Who else we got? Uh, well, Common just released. Uh, I think it's called Let Love. So the OGs is still doing. They Twister still making music. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, Shauna still making music. So shout it's, out to all of them. Yeah, so it's definitely one of those things where Chicago music is still alive. I love, know, listen, here. Chicago, we didn't, you know how the Source Awards, the Source Awards. Good old Source Awards. Uh, Dre got on the stage and he really felt disrespected because the South Atlanta wasn't getting the just dues. And he got on the stage and he said, you know, the South got something to say. Right. I feel as though we haven't had that moment, and I think that that moment's about to happen. I feel like, you know, they take Chicago's slang, they take our lingo, they take our style. <laughs> They've been taking a lot of things from <laughs> us. Nobody has opened their mouth and said <laughs> said nothing about it. Only because, you know... Because where Tatiana came from. It came from us. <laughs> Everybody know that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Even I heard something today... And they were saying something like, oh, yeah, New York's drill scene. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> New York's drill scene? What's I that? mean, it's flattery, but at the same time, it has to be, you know, it has to be paid homage. Like, people got to realize and know that. See, we so stuck on gang culture, right? We could have capitalized on Tatiana, and we should have spoke up when the boy made it. Like, yo, paid homage to where you got it from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, man, we could man, we could talk on so many subjects when it comes to that. But yeah, yeah. Chicago music, I love it. I still love it. I, I love everybody. Hopefully, we can make some things happen. So you definitely got. Um, so do you know the name of this next project yet? Not, not right now. Not right now. I'm tossing up. I'm actually let the pro I'm gonna let the title come to me. Okay. I'm gonna let it come to me. That's how I usually work. I don't really sit there and be like, uh, you know. I you just let it happen. So when it happens, it happens. It comes out, it comes out. Is there a date on a single? Uh, not right now. I'm not right now. Like I say, I'm away to twenty. Everything is still cooking. I'm a, I'm a plan. I'm about to go into straight laboratory, and I'm about to start planning <laughs> everything. Everything's about to be planned. So most definitely, it looks like the plan is is coming together. It looks like um everything is doing its thing. Um. We also have this good old mic here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the good old golden mic, but it's not golden. <laughs> mm. So, you know, Do It For The Culture would love it if you would bless her with a couple bars, a little something mm. that the people can preview and get ready for this. Because this finna change their lives. This project is, I feel like this project is I about to so, be man. one of those things that definitely, I they're going to so. get the message. I think so. You know what I'm saying? So I think, um, you know, I know where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. And I know it's definitely going to be where you're about to definitely wake these people up. It's about that time. The wake you know up, man. The rebirth. Yeah, I, I, the I, the I, rebirth. I, I definitely. Words. Look, he said, I'll say some words. I'll say some words. <laughs> you got to bless the culture real quick. <laughs> so definitely give them again your social media. Y'all can follow me at the underscore Jacoby underscore. The, that's T-H-E-E -E underscore J-A-C-O-B-Y underscore. Again, that's T-H-E-E -E <laughs> underscore J-A-C-O-B-Y underscore. And any more uh, business ventures coming up besides music that they need to look out for? I'm working with artists, writers, uh, producers. Um, I'm executive producing projects. I've, you know, I've helped... Uh, collaborate on certain things. I would never say I ghost written for anybody because I don't believe in that. Uh, but I executive produce, manage, direct videos, photography, <laughs> uh, marketing, everything. So, yeah, everything. Everything. Most definitely. So, we here with the one and only Jacoby. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Do It For The Culture. Make sure you follow us at Do It For The Culture 2 mm -hmm. on Instagram. Make sure you follow me at Real It's D. Mm -hmm. That's on all major platforms. And you can also follow Do It For The Culture on all major plat platforms as well. And you can now go to www.doitforthecoach.com mm. and get all of your media, all of your news, all of your gossip right there. Mm. Check us out. Appreciate y'all.